The following is a presentation of the Eagles Sports Network. So we now bring in Coach Mike Mincy after Kirsten Newman wins this game by 17 points. And, Coach, uh, when you look at this contest, you fall behind early, you score 13 unanswered, you build up a good lead, 23 points. How do you assess your team's overall performance by winning this quarterfinal matchup? Uh, I mean, we're very happy, obviously, after what happened last year to uh, to come into this game and certainly in the first half play uh, play much, much better than uh, we did in the second half. So in the first half, uh, you know, at, we got off to a rough start there, missed a layup, missed two free throws. But then, uh, you know, we finally found some, some – we hit back-to-back-to-back threes, I think it was there. And, and then I thought the second group, uh, that came in, played really well, played especially exceptionally well on the defensive end. So uh, I think that first quarter, cer- certainly the first half, set us up for the success that uh, we didn't necessarily see in the second half. Overall, though, you get great performances from Lindsey Taylor and Addison Bird. Those two kind of carry the load with yep. 44 combined points. And, oh, yeah, 18 rebounds between the two of them. They yep. make 20 of 35 shots. Uh, how did those two perform so well in this game? Well, one, you know, Lindsey gives us that inside presence, obviously, going 10 of 18 from the field. Uh, that's huge. And then Bird uh, has been playing really well of late. And, uh, you know, the way she shoots it, she's got it above her head. You know, she's a very difficult guard. And, and when she can shoot it the way she's shooting like that, I mean, she could certainly do that about every game. Uh, so not necessarily surprised by that because we see it a lot in practice, and certainly she's had some games here of late. So as a senior, you know, this is their, I guess, their last home. I actually didn't think about that. But this is the last time they'll play in this, uh, in this gym. Uh, And so for her to drop 24, you know, certainly happy for her. When you look at a game like this, I I know certainly there's probably part of you that wishes you could have gotten that thing out to 25, maybe 30. But what kind of lesson do you take from a game like this, knowing that in the postseason, a team isn't just going to lay over fold. There are going to be comebacks. There are going to be surges in the second half, no matter what the differential is. Well, I think the one thing that we just talked about in the locker room, you know, we had a lot of good energy out of the press and into our half-court defense in the first half. Certainly in the third quarter, I thought we did a pretty good job with that to some degree. But then, you know, we gave up offensive rebounds, and some of them it looks like there was just nobody there, and, and it fell in Wise's hands. And then we got beat off the bounce, which we weren't necessarily doing in the first half. They shot some open threes. I think they missed most of, you know, the, the ones that were open. And uh, that's why I, ba- I used a bunch of timeouts because it was just to ask them questions as to what's going on. You know, because they can look at the scoreboard. They can see that they're nursing a 20-point lead, and they can see that Bird and Lindsey and some others are scoring, you know, and we're, keep, we're keeping that thing. But, uh, you know, when it gets tournament time, you, you do have to you, – you can't take anything for granted. Uh, you know, they hit a few more threes. They try to sneak back into it, and it might be a different ball game. And so, uh, you know, that's the, that's the biggest disappointment moment. But you score 86. Uh, you know, Braylon doesn't have a great game. She's she, We put her on the bench. Uh, uh, not feeling well, so uh, you know you don't have your leading score really do much at all, and you still drop 86. So you know that there's something else to look at, I guess. Well, let's talk about the bench because Skylar Boshears uh, hasn't been in double figures since Valentine's Day. Yep. She gives you 12. Campbell Penland very efficient uh, with four or five shooting, eight points from her, and Harley Smith with eight points. You talk about the ability to score 86. Well, it comes from that bench. Mm-hmm. At this point in the season, how critical is it for your group to get performances like that to make sure that you are able to build out a lead? Well, if you're going to play the way we play, I think you need depth, and, and we certainly have 10 players that we trust. And, uh, you know, I really liked it tonight because it hasn't always been that way of late to where they came in, and I felt like that that second group, you know, we had them all five on the floor at the same time, and, and they were getting after it on the defensive end, out of the press, and being efficient, you know, and Skyler was a was a huge key there with her scoring. You know, I think Harley played, scored well. Um, I think early, or in the first half, I think Campbell was one of our leading scorers going into the halftime break. So that group, if they can do that, um, and we can play those 10, all of them, and not necessarily go platoon ball, we did that a few times a night, uh, I mean, I think we can play in deep into the tournament, but, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. But uh, but I'm glad that we got, uh, what, everybody 13 minutes uh, was the least, and most people were up around 17 or more. So that's, that's really good uh, uh, dist- distribution of numbers or minutes as we go through into this uh, Saturday matchup with Catawba. You talk about the Saturday matchup against Catawba. Well, February 12th in this facility, you had your worst shooting performance, lowest scoring output of the season. They forced 30 turnovers against Newberry tonight. You won an overtime in their gym, and mm-hmm. I'm sure Catawba might think to themselves, probably should have won that yeah, game. Yeah, they they yeah. committed a foul with under a second to go on Campbell Penland. What's going to be the key to trying to advance to a SAC tournament championship game and take on a very good Catawba team that, as of right now, potentially is even thinking about its NCAA tournament hopes as their seventh in the region? 
I mean, once you go to uh, to a neutral site at Timmins Arena in Furman, you know, it, it changes things a little bit, and, and there's a little bit more nervousness to uh, to most all the players. It's a different arena, um, and you, and you got to just make plays. you got to be able to make shots. Um, and that's the thing when we played here. Uh, when we played over there, we shot it great. Uh, and when we played here, we just could not find the bottom of the net at all, and I thought we had looks. And, uh, you know, that was our last loss, and, and – uh, you know, so we're looking forward to the rematch. They're a good team, and, uh, you know, I think going over there, we're just going to have to – hopefully we can play poised and, you know, certainly getting stuff out of Bird and Lindsay like what they've been doing here of late. And then by Saturday, Braylon will be fine and, and she'll get, back to her, get herself back to where she's capable of doing. Um, looking forward to getting back over there. Because, you know, the two of the last three years coming in this year, uh, we failed in this game, and so it's nice to learn from those failures and, and actually uh, achieve getting back over to Furman where, you know, we feel like we should be every year. Coach, really appreciate the time. We'll talk to you on Saturday. Thank you, Michael.